North Korean provocations. We've grown somewhat numb to them here in the nation, but noticeable strides made in missile technology as more citizens down south worried. Pyongyang declared it completed its weapons development after their latest ICBM launch. For the second part of our year end special, Oh Jung has a wrap up of the regime's nuclear missile upgrades through 2017. This year, North Korea conducted one nuclear test and 15 missile tests, firing 20 missiles in total. That's fewer tests than last year, but this year's provocations were bolder and more daring in that the regime continuously tested upgraded missiles, which are now deemed to be capable of striking anywhere in the United States. Among the missiles Pyongyang fired in 2016, the ones with longest ranges were the intermediate-range Musudan ballistic missiles. These can fly up to 3,000 kilometers, putting the U.S. territory of Guam within reach. But these missiles weren't considered a big threat, as only one out of the eight Musudan tests was successful. This year, the regime started firing missiles with longer ranges. Intermediate-range Hwasong-12 missiles fired in August and September passed over Japan. ICBM-level Hwasong-14 missiles in July, which were launched at a lofted angle, reached altitudes of 2,800 and 3,200 kilometers, and the latest Hwasong-15 reached an even higher altitude of over 4,400 kilometers. The higher the altitude, the longer the missile range. If fired at a normal trajectory, the Hwasong-15 is believed to be able to fly up to 13 or 14,000 kilometers. The Hwasong-15 ICBM can carry a supersized nuclear warhead and strike the whole United States. It's the DPRK's most powerful ICBM and meets the DPRK's goal of completing the rocket weapons development. But still unanswered are two questions. Has North Korea developed the technology to miniaturize a nuclear warhead? And can its missiles successfully re-enter the Earth's atmosphere? The ideal weight of a nuclear warhead designed for an ICBM is seen to be around the 500 kilogram range. But some experts say if the engine's strong enough, the warhead may not have to be made any lighter. I've conducted a virtual simulation after the Hwasong-15 launch, and even if we assume the warhead's weight as 700 to 800 kilograms, it appears the missile can fly up to 10,000 to 12,000 kilometers. This would mean that the North has lightened its nuclear warhead to a sufficient level for itself. Missile re-entry is another crucial part. When an ICBM re-enters the atmosphere, it has to protect the nuclear bomb inside from frictional heat of 7,000 to 8,000 degrees Celsius, as well as massive pressure and vibrations. Whether the North has achieved this technology is not clear, but pundits say Pyongyang was still aiming to test the technology through the latest Hwasong-15 launch. The North decided not to fire its missile to fly over Japan because if it does, then it can't check whether the missile successfully re-entered the atmosphere as it doesn't have a satellite. But if the missile falls in the East Sea, then the regime can check the missile re-entry using radar. Having declared the completion of its nuclear weapons program, will the reclusive regime continue with its provocations? Analysts say the North could possibly halt its provocations at least temporarily until after Pyeongchang Winter Olympics and turn toward the peaceful dialogue with the surrounding countries. But if that fails, the North could conduct further ICBM and even submarine launch ballistic missile tests and a seventh nuclear test to develop an even lighter nuclear warhead. What the North calls a completion is actually about 90 percent complete, not 100 percent. There's more stages Pyongyang has to go through to diversify its missiles and actually deploy them. The North could also go on to develop solid fuel missiles and SLBMs. Next week, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will make his New Year speech. And there's a lot of interest on whether he'll use the speech to officially declare North Korea as a nuclear state and hint at the possibility of starting negotiations with the U.S. Oh Jung-hee, Arirang News.